What's up, Cradle fans? I'm back with a new video that probably should have been made months ago. Uh, we're talking about authority today, but more specifically in this video, we're talking about icons and everything we know about icons, everything we can guess about icons, and then some speculation about icons. Then tomorrow, um, I'll be making a video on authority, like just the general concept of authority and the different aspects of authority that we know about, which will then lead into an Abadan video, which will discuss all the different all the different divisions of the Abadan, their purpose, how they use authority, etc. But we have to start with the basics, and the basics, the most simplest concept that is currently available to discuss regarding authority is the use and manifestation of icons. So that's where we'll start. So let's get into it. All right, let's get into this. I made another slide deck to organize my thoughts. But we're going to talk about icons. And we're going to briefly touch on authority because it's sort of required to understand what an icon is because it's uh, related to authority and it's related to the way. But how we understand the word icon, if you were to Google it, or you'd get a couple different definitions, one of which says a person or thing regarded as a representative symbol. That's important because an icon is a representative symbol of a universal concept. That seems vague. We'll, we'll get into it more. So let's move on. So let's talk about the concept of authority. I'm making in a video, a follow-up video to this that is all about authority. It will deep dive into authority all the different concepts and it'll cover these bullet points specifically one two and four so within the will verse each of the iterations especially in sector 11 have energy systems that require you to exert your will over them um, or or like earn the right to you know use them or you get owned by them so in on amalgam with the travelers you have to master different things within different territories and then you can summon those things and if you try and overexert your own authority over things you don't have authority over it will take over you you will incarnate that's the whole concept is you don't have enough authority to do what you're supposed to do so the the whole uh, territory exerts its authority over you and manifests through you and you're screwed. Then you have in Elder Empire series, you have authority with regards to intent. And then you have reading, which is like reading the authority of something. Um, intent is also weird because it's like putting your authority. It's like a transfer of authority into an object. Anyway. Um, on Cradle, authority manifests itself in a couple different ways, which is interesting and is, which is why I think the people, um, the sacred artists on Cradle, um, much more easily ascend because there's like a, a legitimate path to developing authority. The first of which is ruler techniques. When you take on a path, you take on a certain amount, a certain aspect of Madra in your core. Uh, then you can develop ruler techniques around that aspect, if that aspect exists in the aura of the world. So a ruler technique is authority over your aspect. In Black Flame, the book, when Jai Daisho is fighting Ethan, Ethan, he uh, actually has an internal dialogue where he says that Ethan has no authority over sword Madra which is true. And so he, he believes that he can use sword Madra to cut Ethan. Uh, and that's right. Cause Ethan doesn't have any authority over sword Madra because he, he's not a sword artist. Yaren though does have authority over sword Madra and sword aura. And one would say that she has more authority than other sword artists because her path is built around ruler techniques. And that's really interesting. Uh, then, so ruler techniques, authority over aspects of Madra. Uh, then you move a step up and you have soul fire. 
uh, soul fire is first you I think Ethan says something like you have to master yourself then you have to master the world around you then you connect yourself to the world around you and soul fire is the weaving of a vital aura using the unity of aura so when all aura blends into one you weave that into soul fire and then you can use that to manipulate aspects outside of your madra type so that gives you authority over all aspects of aura over all aspects of yeah um, of, of aura which is again super interesting because to get soul fire you have to connect yourself with the world and then you can exert your authority over the world and if we go back all the way to unsold elder whisper mentions the uh, mastering um, heaven and earth have you mastered heaven and earth and i think that's like a progression of uh, authority you exert authority over one step at a time over earth and then you've mastered yourself on cradle and then you can start moving towards mastering heaven which is mastering the way um, icons come in sort of in the middle of that and um, i think icons are the authority over a universal concept so you've got the sword icon You've got the dragon icon and we can speculate on what other icons there are. I have a theory about sages, um, but I'm not really, it's not fully fledged yet, but I'm, I can pretty confidently say that one of the progression requirements of either sage, herald, or monarch is to permanently manifest an icon in your spirit. I would have much more confidence in this theory if I knew whether or not North Strider was a sage or not. So, Will, if you watch this video and you want to hit me up and let me know if North Strider was in fact a sage at one point, that would help. Uh, and I'll show I'll show a quote in a little bit where I try and tie all that together and prove that North Strider has a icon in his in his spirit. Um, and then beyond icons, we have authority over aspects of the way. Uh, I'm going to talk about this the most in the next video and then the a little bit in the Abadan video, but I'm going to talk about it most in the next video, um, authority over aspects of the way, which um, each of the divisions of the Abadan, to get into a division, you have to show a specific aptitude towards authority over that aspect of the way. I also think that there might be an aspect of there might be aspects of chaos as well. Excuse me, and that anyway, I'll talk about that later. A different video. All right, so icons in the text. We first see icons discussed when everybody freaks out when Yaren beats Lyndon in their fight one on one. So of course Yaren Aurelius. Uh, had achieved a reflection of the sword icon anyone with any authority of their own would take notice but it was most likely an anomaly underlords could not sense the way clearly enough to manifest an icon it was a demonstration of the sacred artist she might one day become nothing more so that's interesting because north strider is now saying she's not connected enough to be able to sense the way um, so perhaps an overlord can sense the way more clearly uh, but definitely an Arc Lord, one would assume. And then we know that Heralds and Monarchs absolutely can. Um, we know that Sages absolutely can. But we don't know if Sages can uh, at a general level or if it's like a specific level. Uh, so there's, there's too much unknown there to talk much about it. But I do want to call out that everyone keeps talking in the, in, in the book. Everyone talks about how uh it's because she was the sword sage's disciple and she took his remnant and it's true if you back up a little bit to the end of the fight when yaren seeps into her deeper senses and connects with that unknown thing and then when she is connected to that unknown thing and weaves together her final sword technique which is a layering of her own authority of 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 sword her own sword authority like over and over again 
she accidentally tumbles into the next layer of authority of the sword icon while she's deep in her senses blah 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 but she she falls into her senses and she uh, taps into her remnant so people keep calling that out that um taking on a sage's remnant is really 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 helpful and it clears the way to the next level of advancement because you can draw on latent authority within the remnant that that's my assumption um, you can draw on latent authority within the remnant which allows you to you know do more cool stuff so let's move on uh, next we see a discussion of icons in the path of the hungry deep and this blew a hole into the whole um <laughs> blew a hole into the whole the concept of creating living techniques and i'll talk about that in a second so the path uh, of the hungry deep a path focused on devouring the physical and spiritual strength of dragons as well as their latent authority using them to empower the user most techniques are rudimentary but become complex in execution when brought to life with the touch of the dragon icon. Now, uh, there is only one place currently for us to see this in action. So let's bounce over to the death match with North Strider. And he, this isn't explicitly called out, <clears throat> but he half forges they twist it into half forged shapes of dragons, each of them pressing away from him as, as though trying to escape. The strength of these devoured dragons flooded his body along with their rage. His senses couldn't stretch past the tower, but the blah, 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 blah. So he's forging these dragons and he's using, he's using his version of the dragon icon to, you know, give them life. Uh, we know that he's doing this because it says so in the book. And then you can go back to see him actually doing a dragon technique. And then later on, he does it again, where he actually does the... Um, Northstrider releases the Serpent's Maw, the forger technique he uses to break through barriers. Uh, makes a serpentine dragon, as dense as a remnant. Floods it with soul fire. Blah, blah, blah. And then the dragon... Um, flies and swallows and then you know lets out a piercing cry because it's it's uh it's alive so to speak um it has been given power by the representative symbol of dragons as a universal concept of the way okay um and then the path of the hungry deep is the most powerful hunger matter path still in modern use which is interesting for the next quote that I talk about. It's a hunger matter path, and the path focuses on devouring the physical and spiritual strength of dragons as well as their latent authority. So we're going to talk about this more in the authority video, but there have been a couple of times that Lyndon has used his arm and like something that's dull gray goes into it. And we don't know what or whatever, and then nothing happens to his arm. It could be that he's just like removing the authority that was placed in whatever object. Like for example, in Sky Sworn, he's doing the Sky Sworn trials, and there are these objects, um, these flying balls that are like constructs that are programmed to do something. He straight up jacks their authority, and then they go dead. That's what I think, anyway. Because he has no clue what he does to them when he grabs them, because he's he's a dumb at this point low gold um, that's using he's like batting out of his uh, or he's, he's punching out of his weight division anyway uh, let's move on to talking about how for sure actually let's back up real quick um, using the icon to give uh, life to uh, techniques there is dozens of mentions of techniques having life and how it's a technique that's much too advanced uh, for the people that we see doing it. And how could that be? Blah, blah, blah. Um, there's a Reddit thread that, or a Reddit post that was made a long time ago by Tevil two years ago. Um, I'll post this in the link below that you, you can go check out. It's a, an aggregation of all the different uh, points in the books up to that point where a technique 
had been given life. Um, this is, I'll just do the, read the first one, but imbuing forged Madra with temporary life is an advanced technique far beyond Jai Long. He can only produce this result because of because he absorbed a remnant from a path we'll call unnatural, um, which just means that it's a path that originated with someone having, like it might have been a sage on some kind of like, you know, serpent path and they had the icon of, of a serpent or something and all their techniques were, um, were you know, forger techniques that created living whatever so like if north strider died and his remnant was absorbed by some idiot they would be able to create dragons that were alive very early on um and we actually see jai chen yeah so she was attacked by this remnant and somehow got some aspects of it and there's a there's one part in here where right right here she releases the, the technique from between her hands and a finger-sized worm of pink uh, tinged light slithered into the air. Though it was smaller, it seemed somehow more real than Jai Long's attacks. The serpents, uh, the serpents he created uh, while fighting were bare outlines, like sketches of snakes, but this tiny dragon drew up in front of Jai Chen, sniffing her face like a dog. It was like a tiny remnant, like a real spirit, like Little Blue. And then there's another point. Yeah. The serpentine dragon roared, surging from the space between her hands. It was like one of his snakes, only far more detailed. You could see a pair of whiskers on its face, its scales on its body, and then it it like screams with a majestic cry, and then the blood uh, the blood shadows or whatever were splattered uh, across the floor with the sheer momentum of its charge. Awed, Jai Long extended his spiritual perception. The substance of this creature felt like nothing he'd ever seen before. It was something like his own Madra, corrupted by the remnant long ago. But at the same time, it was also refined in a way he couldn't describe. Like Jai Long's power had been boiled down, purified, perfected, and then strengthened. And then there were elements that reminded him of a storm. So Jai Chen uses the Arc Stone to absorb everyone's Madra. Uh, and the Ark Stone itself might have already contained some of the Weeping Dragon's living lightning Madra. And somehow the combination of all that stuff pressed into her spirit with all that pure Madra of, of Athens. And then of Athens' obvious ability and authority, it, it refined it. So that's a whole rabbit hole. I'm not going down in this video, but... Icons giving life to techniques has a lot of foreshadowing and you can go check out that thread um, but again I, I've had this argued with me a bunch an icon is probably used for a bunch of stuff and one of its use cases is Giving techniques life. There's probably a bunch of other use cases like manifesting it within yourself Whatever Yaren did, you know to make her attack land that much more perfect that much sooner than Linden's despite having Dross speeding up his perception and his reaction time uh, also remember that Linden is a hodgepodge of powerful stuff he doesn't have any focused focused intent or like focused uh, authority he's got a pure path he's got a black flame path he's got a hunger arm he has a pure awesome remnant He's got a dream mind construct that's a baby presence, and he hasn't found a way to like tie all this stuff together, so he doesn't have any focused authority yet. That's what I think is going to happen in the next book. But Yaren has focused, focused, focused sword authority, and she was able to draw on a higher level and do something, I don't know what it was, to beat Linden. The end. Um, her authority superseded his in that regard. She wins. Lyndon now gets a whole arc of redemption where he's going to become much stronger because of it. Good, good for him. That's uh, personal development 101. So moving on to icons and potential pro progression in the future of advancement. Um, this quote is at the end of Ghostwater, and it was rampant speculation about Soulfire early on. 
at Dragon Con 2018, I asked Will if this scene depicted Soulfire. He said no. It depicts a higher magic system that we haven't seen yet. Perfect. Now we know about icons. Now we know that North Strider uses the dragon icon. And now when we retroactively go back, we can reread this and it gives a whole new life to this passage. With a breath, he cycled it into his core. The vitality of dragons seeped into him, strengthening his body and his spirit. A spark within his soul carried the image of a dragon, majestic and roaring. It fed upon the imprint of the dragon's life that remained in the aura, in this aura. That's a fucking dragon icon. It might be specific to North Strider in that it can feed upon the latent authority of other dragons. But that's that's a dragon icon. And it is in his spirit. It is there. And so what I'm thinking is that it gets weirder and weirder as you progress through the sacred arts, right? It gets much more personal, much more lonely, much more individual. Each level of soul fire probably has something to do with why you practice the sacred arts. Then we don't know what's beyond that. We know that going from Ark Lord to Sage is extremely hard. It's a huge gap. And we know that going from Ark Lord to Herald is much easier. There are benefits of going to Sage. Much more focused, much deeper understanding of your path. I think that has to do with manifesting an icon, a permanent icon in your spirit. And I think that it, when you can manifest an icon in your spirit, it gives you powers of the way that a herald doesn't have. We know that a herald can still use the way, can still, because they have enough authority, but it's not specific enough that it allows them to do, you know, awesome stuff. Cheating, as you will. We know that the Abaddon prefer sages because... Well, we know that the Abaddon prefer sages. We know that the sages basically get to cheat. And we know that heralds are way more powerful. But we don't... But because sages get to cheat, we don't know if heralds and a sage is in a fight. We don't know who wins. But I think that's what makes... Uh, in part, that is what makes a sage. I don't know why manifesting a permanent icon in your spirit is so hard but hey we've got five more books to find out and then once the series is done we can just ask the author so that is basically my my whole spiel on icons um, they're obviously linked with authority authority is super interesting and I'll get into that in the next video and then in the Abadan video but what are your thoughts on icons? Uh, how, are my theories stupid? Are they awesome? Do you think they'll come true? Do you think they won't? Let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks for being patient with me. See you next time.